Yeah, I'm Andrew Cameron, the Ag Extension Officer at Bryanshire Council. Uh, today we are exploring a new way of managing camp florals. Camp fur is a, you know, it's a big thing in our region. We focus a lot of energy on it. And today we're going to explore some chemical free ways of managing camp floral, converting camphor into rainforest. They are habitat, they can be a source of timber, and they can be a source of food. So traditionally in this context of clearing species or, or eradicating invasive weeds, we're looking at these short-term fast results. We can almost say it's not working as well as we'd like, and we need to understand that nature works at a much different pace to us in our human time scale. And understanding that I think is very important to managing forests especially. Today we have Nadia from Organic Land Care. She's been doing chemical free bush regen. Had some great success with landholders converting camphor to rainforest with no chemical, increasing biodiversity, increasing soil health and increasing habitat. And we've got Pierre from Rainbow Regen who's doing a lot of great work with using mushrooms to speed up the process of the dying off of camphors, but also using that as a medium for growing food. My name is Nadja de Souza Pietramali. I'm from Organic Land Care Incorporate. We're not new. Uh, we've been around for 13 years under Baranshire Chemical Free Land Care. I learned bush regenerating in Australia, but so when I find myself after 15 years into the industry, completely dependent on using a synthetic herbicide, it wasn't working. I start to try different things and eventually figure out uh, in the last 13 years what to do. The, the ring bark is, um, we create a ring around the canvas. We use a tomahawk to, uh, to start and because we only work in the warmer months of the year, we can just peel the bark once we start. Always the size of the ring is the size of the width of the tree. We never go into the cambia layer so we don't injure the inner layer because we want the water to keep going up to the, to the canopy and to the tree continue to realize photosynthesis. That's why the tree doesn't die straight away, because, but it can't bring the sugars down. So with time, you see the top ring becomes fatter and fatter. Eventually, the tree will die from starvation because between the tree and the ground, there is a, a sugar deal between the mycorrhiza and the tree. And the mycorrhiza bring the minerals, the tree gives the grandmother mushroom all the sugar. And when it, the deal is not happened for a few years, the deal finish. So the tree collapse and that's how the camphor die. So if I drill a camphor, it, I, it's too much light, too fast. In a month, it's not enough time for me to manage all the wood weeds underneath. So with the ring back technique that we use, we use a very slow approach. So when the tree is ring back, and we only ring back during the warmer months of the year, so during spring and summer, because that's easy, so it speed up the work, so economically speaking, it's much more efficient. And also occupation health and safety doesn't injure your shoulders. It's really important to protect your eyes, because when you chip in the camphor to, to do the ring, uh, the back flick really fast into your eyes. Don't ring back any tree near any public road or internal roads in your property. Make sure you bring an arborist and cut that tree down if you want to be removed, but don't ring back. As the camphor laurel die, in three years, maybe I lose 70% of the canopy leaves. So that and the gyoas and the cheese tea, all the early succession and the later succession species that are under the camphor canopy, the natives, they have time to catch up and slowly catching up and getting dense and dense canopy. So by the time that camphor lost 100% of the leaves, the ground is shaded by the natives that were sitting underneath. A camphor is doing us the biggest favor ever. Camphor is breaking through melassus grass, cetereus grass, shading the ground and allowing the forester to come underneath. 
Yes, the camp is taking over, but that's good because we clear the land. If we didn't clear the land, you, d you go to health fragments of the big scrub, you don't see one single camphor seedling there. You only see camphors in disturbed land. So the camphors actually doing the northern rivers a big favor, shading our creeks so we don't have green algae. And then we come underneath as custodians of this land, helping the transition, but with gratitude for camphor, gratitude for privet. Hey, I'm Pierre, I work for Rainbow Region. Uh, I specialise in micro-region, which is using endemic fungi to phase out woody weeds, in this instance camphor laurel and privet. So the micro-region process entails uh, the approach of a target selected specimen, for example a camphor, and we're going to ring bark that with the back of a hatchet or a hammer, removing the bark around the entire tree about neck height, and then we're gonna, on the south side we'll run a racing stripe, so to speak, where we've got, say, a solid portion, at least 100 mil wide of bark removed all the way down to the root ball. Depending on the size of the specimen we might be running numerous racing stripes. But essentially the dowels are then applied through the drilling of an 8 mil hole or 8.5 mil hole with a Japanese style drill bit with an auger and a stopper so you're not wasting time. And then the dowels are applied by hand, twist fitted and then hammered in with a, uh, with a hammer. Uh, and then we are basically waxing over the top to ensure we maintain moisture and humidity within the dowel and so it can continue to grow. And then generally after approximately three months we'll be seeing 20 cent size pieces of mycelium, so to speak, rippling out from that inoculation point. And within 12 months our ideal scenario is the mycelium has joined up, the organism is now one, and it can continue to chew through that woody biomass and digest that camphor in situ. I think all it takes is a perspective shift to recognise that we've got huge volumes of woody biomass that are locked up in this rather fungally inert, so to speak, lattice of lignin and cellulose and we've got the tools now at hand of these endemic fungi to be able to release these nutrients, release this carbon chain back into the food cycle while yielding edible or medicinal gourmet mushrooms from that, from that biomass. So yeah, it's just a matter now of, of really dialing in that formula and figuring out exactly how much spawn to apply and what the conversion rates are for certain species. And um, yeah, just really de developing that formula. It's generally a lot of excitement when the concept comes through and a lot of revelation and oh, like size of relief almost of people that have large plots of land and, and are largely infested with these woody weeds and have got no idea how to go about transitioning it back into a balanced ecosystem. And the concept of being able to do it in a manner that is financially viable is a huge relief to them. So farming food and medicine from growing rainforest seems to be the most obvious way forward. It's become the way we live our lives on principle is to um, not use chemicals, uh, whether it's in our bodies, on our bodies. And I see that you know a body of water is the same as our body. And, and my understanding of health is that you can't hope to be health, healthy if you continue to put toxins in your body or your system. This concept of transition, the understanding of how rainforest trees respond to light and so that's a key thing when you're dealing with the campers. It's a great relief to find someone who is on the same page. There's just so much to learn. There's a lot of loss through using herbicides all the time. You lose topsoil, you end up killing off seed stock that's in the soil. You're not yeah, facilitating understory canopy that's coming up and starting to grow. And we know that glyphosate kills off many of the organisms that live in the soil as well, which also help the trees grow. You know, use shade, use other plants, do a little bit of ring barking and, and, and inoculating. You know, there's, there's other ways, there's new ways. I really think in terms of custodianship and being custodians of this land, we need to explore new ways of looking after it and explore all options and alternatives that we may have that will help us leave this better than we found it.